Hi guys, um, my name's Tessa. I am starting this vlog um, partially as a way for me to keep track um, of my own journey and also uh, for anyone else who is um, wanting to do the GAPS intro diet. Um, I just think that it's always good to have more resources and to see what other people are doing. Um, I actually got the idea to do the GAPS diet um, from watching uh, Rebecca Rhodes' uh, vlog, The Beautiful Life, um, and got interested in that because I was interested in permaculture and was following her husband, or I guess their family channel. Um, so, um, the GAPS diet. Uh, stands for gut and psychology syndrome um, which I think kind of the general premise is um, essentially whatever is going on in our gut kind of affects our whole body has to do with the gut brain connection which essentially has been proven even within the mainstream medical community um, and so I'm going to get real vulnerable and kind of talk about some of the things that I have had going on in my life um, basically since I was born um, that have kind of led me here and why I'm doing um, the GAPS diet. So uh, when I was born actually, um, I was very colicky. Um, I it was discovered that I had a severe thrush infection that was down into my stomach. Um, I kept getting thrush outbreaks in my mouth and of course I, my mom was breastfeeding so we were passing it back and forth. Um, it was on her uh, nipples and um, so basically as Dr. Natasha um, Campbell McBride talks about in her book Gut and Psychology Syndrome, um, I'm kind of like a key person to have this gap syndrome um, because looking back I was obviously born um, to a mother that had an altered gut flora and then that was passed on to me and then of course over my lifetime with various um, rounds of antibiotics for little infections strep throat and things like that um, you know that alters the flora more uh, I'm an ER nurse so I <laughs> have to apologize actually for my um, slightly disheveled appearance. I just got off of a night shift, so bear with me. I did actually think about kind of having a nap, having a shower, making this seem very more put together, and then I just thought, you know what, that's absolutely not the point. The point is kind of that I'm a bit of a mess, and I've been trying to figure out all the things that have been going on with me for like my whole life. Um, and so I think it's just better if I'm just really real. And part of that is like I worked a 12 hour night shift in the emergency department um, and I came home and I'm starting the GAPS diet today. And honestly, I'm so excited because <laughs> last night um, I thought, okay, it's like my last hurrah. So before work, I went and got um, a Vietnamese sub and I ate half of it and then one of the doctors ordered pizza because whenever he's on night shift he orders pizza it's so sweet so I had a piece of pizza and my tummy has been killing me all night like my poor co-worker was just like what is wrong with you and I have just been so bloated in so much pain and so basically that's one of the main things is that pretty much my whole life almost anything I eat, I end up feeling bloated um, and having like indigestion and just stomach discomfort and gas and um, yeah, so digestion wise, um, I have basically always kind of had minor stomach issues. Nothing that kind of got me to seek out like lots of medical advice or anything like that. Um, I think the interesting thing is I, I have lived with so many of these things for so long that it took until recently, it took being a nurse, um, it took having an injury and a complication from an injury to realize that the amount of pain that I have been in for the majority of my life is not normal. Like I just saw everyone's stomach hurts 
basically every day. Um, that menstrual cramps are basically like 10 out of 10 extreme pain. Um, yeah, so I'll just kind of quickly go through the list. Um, I'll talk more about it, I think, in future videos. I'm going to try and post on a fairly regular basis, ideally every day, but I, being a shift worker, that seems probably a little unrealistic. Um, so some, I, I basically feel that I for sure have leaky gut syndrome. Um, so I have definitely pretty much my whole life struggled with severe headaches, um, indigestion, uh, weight issues, like very, very difficult for me to lose weight. Um, I have struggled with various kinds of eating dis or disordered eating. Um, my relationship with food is challenging. Um, I have struggled with depression, I would say most of my life. And I would say more so within my like later twenties, like past 25, um, anxiety for sure. Um, and I've always attributed that to being in university or being in a stressful job, um, or just like life events that are happening. I also have psoriasis. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. You can see there, and that really is like, oh, I have it on my legs, I have it in my scalp, I sometimes get it in my eyebrows, I get little spots basically wherever. I also have keratosis pilaris, I don't know if you can see that. That's like the little red dots that people get on their arms. I have rosacea. Um, yeah, so quite a few kind of like psoriasis is autoimmune. Um, and just a lot of things that are kind of telling me that my body is not thriving. It's not at its healthiest. And you guys, I have tried like so many things. One of the best things I did for myself recently actually was the keto diet. Um, and that was really great for me. That actually reduced a lot of my symptoms, but it didn't fix them. Like as soon as I would eat something, I would just feel terrible again. My skin never really cleared up. Um, yeah, so I just feel like I have done certain things like the wild rose cleanse. Um, I've been to see naturopaths and cut out various like things specified to me out of my diet. And it's always made me feel so much better. Like my digestive issues definitely get way better. So I know um, that diet is like a major effect of what's going on in my body. Um, but I've just never been able to actually cure it. And so um, that kind of, as I said, I was basically, I'm trying to think of how I, I think I actually Googled the GAPS diet. I Googled the GAPS diet um, because I kind of came across it when I was looking into like, how can I deal with this? Like, oh yeah, I have like kind of just like general aches and pains like all the time, like joint joint pain all the time, lower back pain all the time. I did break my ankle earlier this year, last or last winter in January. Um, and so I do expect to have like some stiffness and some joint pain, but it's pretty extreme. And I do, you know, I work a kind of a hardcore job. <laughs> so I'm always kind of excusing it um, for that reason. But I, I don't think, you know, I'm 31 years old. I don't think I should be having joint pain. I don't think I, I'm not an athlete <laughs> by a long shot. Hopefully this will give me some more energy to feel more motivated to exercise in more of a routine way um, as opposed to just kind of sporadic. I tend to be a bit more of like a hiker and a long distance swimmer when the opportunity presents, that kind of thing. Um, so... I just kind of wanted to talk about um, what brought me here. So I think that we've kind of talked about that. Um, yeah, I was Googling the GAPS diet. I came across Rebecca Rhodes's um, videos, vlogs that she did about the intro GAPS diet. Um, I went online and I ordered the two books that she used. And I'll just um, show them to you here. 
so the first one that I just think <sighs> honestly I tr I do truly feel like if I didn't have a healthcare medical background this might have been a little bit of a challenging read um, but at the same time I think it's so beneficial to read it because it just explains why you're doing things like why things are out of balance the way that they are why you need to do certain things in the diet um, so that book is by Natasha Campbell McBride um, and that's gut and psychology syndrome there so, I mean, I think it's so interesting that this was really um, built to kind of try and improve autism in children. And yet, I think it's even um, Dr. Campbell McBride, like, mentions that it's so many more things than that. Um, yeah, and I know depression and anxiety, honestly, if I could cure those two things, that would be huge. If I could cure even just my skin stuff, that would be huge. Um, if I could not feel like sick and in pain after every time I eat, that would be huge. So fingers crossed that this is the right thing. I really just feel like it is. Um, and then the other book I got is the Heal Your Gut Cookbook. Um, and I'm excited about this because it has recipes through each um, stage of the intro diet and then the full gaps diet. So of course I haven't read this one cover to cover, um, but I'm excited about it because I just feel like it, having a good cookbook um, when you're restricting your diet like this is just like so helpful to make you feel like you're not restricted, that you are eating really yummy foods um, and feeling nourished and getting those nutrients in, in like a really heartwarming way. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how I have gotten prepared, uh, for this. And really the truth is I'm going to, in a minute here, just kind of show you around my house because I really just want to show you guys that I, I'm just starting basically. Like I, there is always an excuse not to do it. As I said, I've just come off a night shift. I've just finished a set. My house is, it needs a clean, you guys. It's, there are dishes in my sink that are not just from today. And honestly, it's 11.04 and I have been up since eight o'clock yesterday morning. So things are a little bit, yeah. Uh, it's not super organized right now. Um, so a couple of things that I did to prep ahead of time was I bought some local meat. So I bought five chickens from a super, super local uh, farmer. I live on Quadra Island. There's my view. I know you guys, like, thank goodness for this place. Because when I work a crazy shift, that is how I, like, decompress. Um, so five local chickens from a farmer on Quadra Island. I shared um, a quarter of a cow with my mom. So my freezer is full of um, beautiful free range grass fed just out in the world beef and bones. Um, we also bought a large, a very large, an 18 pound sauerkraut cabbage and made um, a huge thing of sauerkraut that is honestly probably ready to eat now, but I'm going to probably let it ferment another couple of days. Um, so I got that going. And then just this morning, um, I started my milk kefir. Um, I think I'm after my nap today, I, so it's just, there's only so much I can do before I sleep because it just gets overwhelming and my brain is slowing down from lack of sleep. Um, I'll do some yogurt to have that ready. And then I also started the um, vegetables fermented in kefir um, as well. So I'll show you guys that. Um, and so last night I put a chicken in the sink to defrost and it was so massive. I had to go borrow a big, huge pot from my dad. Um, it's on my stove right now. So I will show you guys that show you a little bit how I prepped. I'm trying to keep things really simple. I did do a little herb bundle in the broth and I cut one vegetable or one onion from my garden 
you guys, I'm probably going to mention every time stuff is from my garden because I get real excited. One onion from my garden, I just cut it in quarters, and a, a few peppercorns that I'll strain out. Um, and that's really all I put in there. And so the whole chicken, and it smells so good in here. It's only been going for like an hour and a half. Maybe only, probably only like an hour, maybe just over an hour. It smells so good. Um, yeah, so let me just kind of show you guys around and what I've been doing. Um, and then I'm gonna go have a nap and hopefully be a little bit less frazzled next time. So, I'll just come over here. So yeah, so this is my house, I mean, I know, I know that view. It's, I'm very lucky. So to show you over here, my stock is in there boiling away. Can you see it? Ooh, fogged up the camera there, sorry. So yeah, there's a whole chicken in there. A Little bit of onion. Again, I'm keeping it really simple. My plan is basically to make a soup with this probably a couple soups and have some broth to drink as well um, and I'll use the chicken in the soup and just to eat as well I'll probably add some Swiss chard carrots beets a little bit of cabbage and just cook it really 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 well yeah so that's the stock and then you guys for real like my house is like this is oh boy so forgive me that my also my kitchen table is a bit of a mess these are my garlics from my garden this is a sauerkraut that is fermenting um, this is the milk kefir that I just started this morning and the vegetable kefir that I also just started this morning <sighs> So I think I'm ready to go. I also got um, some organic uh, ginger and turmeric to make the ginger turmeric tea with a little bit of honey. I think maybe one of my biggest fears is not being allowed to have coffee. Again, I'm a shift worker. I work nights, I work 12 hour shifts. Sometimes we don't get breaks. It can be very hectic. Other days it's not so hectic, um, but I definitely rely on coffee to kind of get me through especially those more hectic shifts so um, we'll see how that goes anyways I hope that some of you that are maybe interested in starting the gaps diet or maybe you've been reading about it and wanting to start and it just feels overwhelming um, maybe follow along with me or maybe I can give you some ideas or you know just drop in if you need a little booster or some ideas, I'll try and talk a little bit about what I cook. Um, and I'm gonna tr definitely try and talk about how my symptoms are going. Um, so yeah, again, the biggest ones for me are like sleepiness. Like I can literally sleep f for like 36 hours. Obviously I get up and eat a little bit and go to the bathroom and whatever, but like I can genuinely just like keep sleeping forever. So I have this major fatigue, headaches, like migraine headaches, um, digestive issues, skin issues, psoriasis, rosacea, uh, keratosis pilaris. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Joint pain. Um, just like general, like I just know that my body has inflammation. Oh yeah, uh, painful, very, very, very painful, as in like I broke my ankle and it was not as painful as the menstrual cramps that I get. Um, yeah, so those are some of the things. Oh yeah, and depression, anxiety, definitely, um, I'm, I'm, I would say like I, my hormones affect me. Is that too much information? Like I just feel like I'm, I, I, I tend to ride a bit more of a roller coaster than I think maybe the average person does in terms of like PMS and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, let's, let's find out. And hopefully some of you guys are interested and hopefully maybe 
this is encouraging or helpful to some of you. And if you have questions or comments or things that you want me to talk about, um, please comment and let me know. Also, my fermented vegetables, the garlic and cabbage are from my garden. And the carrots are from a local garden on Quadra. The beets are just organic. It's, it was not a good year for beets here. I don't know. No one, no one's grew. My mom's didn't grow. Mine didn't grow. So anyways, um, I think that's going to be it for today. I'm going to go have a nap and hopefully next time I talk to you, it won't take 20 minutes because I might be a bit more organized and less sleepy. Okay. Bye.